Okay, mom. Welcome back, guys. Um, we are gonna introduce a new segment on the show. Before we do anything, though, like, subscribe, hit that button. Yeah. Let's go ring that notification button so you you know when we're posting stuff because we'll post once a week or twice a week. We've got a lot happening. Um, we really appreciate and love the support, and we wish that you could continue to give it to us so that we can continue to make great Please. content for you. Thank you. Thank you. Do it now. All right. Okay. So we're going to introduce a new segment on the show. Okay. It is going to be called, What Would Hina <gasps> Do? WWHD. <gasps> WWHD. I'm down for this. It's gotta be. Okay. I love these things. They're so, so fun. Okay. I'm gonna find scenarios and eventually it'd be great if you guys send us some scenarios and hit okay. I need you in. Uh, I'm locked in. in. Okay. Focus. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. Okay. So I'm gonna read a scenario that I found. Okay. And I want you to really put yourself in the position of the person who posted this. Okay. And then give our audience and us, like, really, what would you do if you were in her shoes? Okay, done. Hey. I can do this. Are y'all ready? Why am I nervous? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to do great in this. <laughs> hey. Okay. The title is My Pakistani Mother-in-Law. Oh, Lord. Lord. Here we go. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Buckle up, people. All right. Okay, let's go. <laughs> I'm an American woman married to a Pakistani guy. Okay. My husband is act is acting like he's in l he has a love affair with his mother and he's totally ignoring me. It's sickening. Everything that she does, he does. I feel like the mother-in-law thrives off of the situation because she is getting even more attention from him. Both of them look at me like I'm the crazy one because I point out these situations to them. Whatever she says, he relays back to me and acts like I have to follow her orders. I'm an adult and this is not how I grew up. Two people trying to micromanage me. All of their behavior is sickening to me and I feel like I'm in a sitcom. Is this normal? Oh my God. What is expected of a daughter-in-law, in particular a Desi daughter-in-law? Both of them outwardly ignore me if I don't follow them or if I don't follow what it is they are asking me to do. I have a mind of my own and can figure out what it is to do or not to do. The way my husband is treating me is making me hate my mother-in-law. What should I do? Oh my God. I know. First of all, that's so heavy. It's so heavy. And I feel like immediately in my mind, I think all of her thoughts are very valid mm -hmm. because I feel like women are like, I don't know, I'm not saying all women, but I feel like in these types of relationships, because you're kind of going into something as like a new person, you see situations in a different light, 100%. right? Um, and so I think when you don't feel safe and you don't feel like you're being treated fairly, majority of the time, you're probably right. Mm -hmm. You're probably right. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. So I think in that situation, the fact that her husband is making her feel that way is... Like, it's just very icky, and it makes me think that she's in a toxic relationship mm. because I don't think any woman should have to compete for attention from her husband. Mm -hmm. Like, you should be, like, the primary, you know, like, love of his life, yeah. and you should be getting all the attention. Yeah. And, you know, his mother has his father. If his father's alive, mm -hmm. I mean, if he's not, she just needs to figure something else out. That's just crazy to yeah. me. So what would you do? Would you approach the husband? Would you talk to the mother-in-law? So you get a third party involved i wouldn't get a third party involved i would definitely not talk to the mother-in-law at first mm -hmm. because i feel like mother-in-laws would they catch feelings in this situation i feel like the mother-in-law would probably talk shit to the, the son mm -hmm. and the son is going to be like oh my god why did you say this to my mom like a hundred percent okay so in that case i would pull that man aside and i'd be like sit your ass down we're gonna have a conversation and if you feel like you can't have this combo then goodbye i can do better Mm. period there's really nothing else i think that i would do and maybe my reaction is harsh but i feel like you know when you feel in your gut that it's not right and you're not being treated well mm. then i think that is an opportunity for you to address the situation and if those changes don't happen where you're not feeling loved and you're not feeling safe and you're not feeling like this relationship is adding to your life, then at that point, it's time to cut the cord and move on out. Mm. That's what I think. Mm. Okay. And I think the mother-in-law needs to chill the F out. Oh, seriously. Because I feel like this entire um, thing that you were saying about like, 
the mother and the son being like obsessed with each other. Yeah. I feel like I've heard that a lot in the Desi community. Me too. What the heck? It's kind of gross. It's so gross. Yeah. I say, that, okay, I have a son and I don't know how I'm going to be growing up. Yes. You have sons. Yeah. But I feel like when you hear these things, you're just kind of like, these are everything I don't want to be. And I hope to God that I don't turn out like this. Yeah. Um, but I feel like you really have to like separate, like there's something going on there where like maybe the son feels like he needs to fulfill some sort of void for the mother-in-law. And I think when mothers are like this, where they can't let go of their children, it comes from a place of like unfulfillment in their lives. hundred percent. Or they're lacking something. And so they feel like their children need to fulfill or fill that gap for them. And I don't think that that's a problem she needs to solve. That's a, mother problem mm -hmm. mother-in-law problem that that woman needs to solve and i don't think she's she's even gonna solve it no you know because you're getting the reinforcement from your son yeah so you feel like you're right also i feel like a lot of mother-in-laws who have this complex which it's a real thing i think so too so you know how there's they, people also say that there's this thing where um guys tend to find girls who resemble their, their moms. moms yeah and girls try to find boys that or guys that resemble their dad yeah. yeah and i think it's also because i think they said it's because the first like woman that you fall in love with is your mom yeah this is what i've heard i don't know how true this is but this is just maybe, kind of like maybe it's we need to get like a therapist on here yeah now. we need to like get in on this because this is kind of like a hot topic yeah now. it is and i and so i feel like in that situation i feel like mother-in-laws wouldn't even admit it Oh, I don't think that they would admit no. it. Why would they? Right? You know I mean, they don't gain anything from admitting it. And I think that's one of the problems that a lot of, um, and not even necessarily mother-in-laws, but even parents, they see parents in general have that, like, they have a hard time admitting that they're wrong. Uh -huh. Like, yeah. or even apologizing and saying, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I've, I've noticed that in a lot of people, cause it's passed down to you too. But I feel like if you don't have the empathy inside your heart to ever admit that you're wrong, then you just become a toxic person Yeah. because you have this pride and ego, which is like, no, like I can't admit that I'm wrong mm -hmm. because then it's going to make me, um, it's it's beneath me mm -hmm. to admit that and i think in that situation i don't see the mother-in-law ever um you know uh wanting to apologize or even take uh, admit her flaws because it would make it seem like she's done something wrong and i don't think she has the capacity to even admit that to herself yeah and i think aside from even admitting that you're wrong it's really hard for mother-in-laws to think that another woman can come into their son's life yeah and kind of take on that role of yeah. caring for the son yeah yeah right? yeah, yeah, yeah so it's yeah. not necessarily that they're going to say oh i'm in the wrong the bahu is always going to be oh, yeah. in the wrong oh yeah no matter what that's so true that's i feel so like they're true. just going to look at the daughter and be like well no because you know i always did this my whole life for the last yeah. 20 some 30 yeah. some years with my son i know him best da -da 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 -da. i know what he likes right and i find that very odd because i'm just like then why did you get him married? You're like, honestly, like in my mind, I'm like, well, if you, if you know what he likes and nobody else knows, then why did you get him married? Cause obviously nothing is going to check off that list for you. Yeah. Right. So you wanted to get him married. Then it was also okay for you to treat the daughter-in-law like shit. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, like you're not going to give her that respect. Mm -hmm. I think give the daughter-in-law the opportunity because yeah. like it's a learning curve and you are also a daughter-in-law. What? Right? That's the thing that has always triggered me so much. Okay. Because they forget. <laughs> they forget. And you know, it's funny because like sometimes like even when we're talking to like, even when I'm talking to people that I know that have toxic in-law situations, they will even say things like, oh yeah, my mother-in-law told me about how hard it was for her in her in-laws. And I'm just like, and so she decided to treat you like shit. Like what? Yeah. It doesn't make sense to me. And it's like, I feel like it's one of those things where when they were the daughter-in-law, they yeah. were like, I'm never going to do oh, that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm never going to treat anybody that way. But then that power play comes yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when all of a sudden you are now mother-in-law status, yeah. you feel the need to impose that power oh, yeah. on the daughter-in-law. I think maybe it comes from a place of like the fear of empty nest syndrome or yeah. maybe the fear of not being needed mm -hmm. that's, that's what, what i think it is yes because i feel like as women um, maybe like our older generation moms they all they did was be mothers they didn't necessarily have the social lives and like and i know some of them did but like there's like a large portion that didn't and mm -hmm. they just devoted their life to motherhood and so like uh, when your children are gone, then you feel like, what do I do? Mm -hmm. What do I do? Mm -hmm. Like, I okay, so I think of it as my mom, right? Okay. 
I don't think my mom is a toxic mother-in-law because she, like, we check my mom. Okay? Yeah. Like, we check her. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Not that she needs it, but sometimes I'm just like, don't, don't say this to like, you know, my sister-in-law. Yeah. Don't, don't ever bring this up, mom. Okay. Don't be that mom. <laughs> like once my mom was like, oh yeah. So like, you know, um, my, my sister-in-law, she's like, she, she went to like a, a trip with my brother. And then my mom was like, yeah, I'm just going to fix her bed. I'm like, no, you're not like, you're not going to that room. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, you're not. And she's like, no, she said I could. I'm like, I don't care. You're not going in there. Like that's the room. Yeah. Leave it alone. You know, like you have to tell them these things, yeah, yeah. right? Because they do it in a place of goodness, but I don't think that, that, that they understand that there's like, no, you can't do those things. People have privacy. But I, well, the point that I was getting to was that I think even when I go over to my mom's house, my sister goes over, my mom is immediately like, what can I make for you? What can I do? Like, how can I do this? How can I do that? Because they feel needed. Mm -hmm. They feel important. And so I think that's what happens with like a guy, like these mothers have doted on their sons. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, oh my God, let me do this for you. Let me do that for you. More on their sons than, and than I would say their daughters. In that way, right. Where it's like the daughter's like, go make your own roti. But then for the son, it's like, let me make you your roti. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so then it's like hard to let them go. Cause you feel like now you don't have anything to do. Yeah. You know, it's the mother-in-laws that need to cut the cord. Absolutely. <laughs> but I also think if the son is married, then grow a pair. And like, why are you being that way? You know what right? it is? I feel like there's so, there's a huge spectrum of husbands. Yeah, okay? totally. And even if some husbands sneak out to their moms or do all these things, they, mother-in-laws can impose so much guilt They can. They can. that the husbands are just kind of like, I really don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they're, they're like, when I look at it from that perspective, I feel like the guy is in a hard spot. Yeah. Right. Because he's having to kind of be in the middle of like the wife and the mother. Mm -hmm. But I, I've always thought this, that like his obligation obligation first and foremost is to his wife. Right. Because she has, his mom has her, her husband. Yeah. You know, if he's alive, like they have that. Yeah. So, like that's not your, like, I understand you should take care of your parents, but not at the cost of it ruining your marriage. A hundred percent. Period. Yeah. Like your wife does not have that in your family. Your wife left her loving family to go into your house, which mm -hmm. is completely new for her. I don't care if you dated for 10 years, it's still a new environment for yeah. her. So now she's, she left left her loving family to come into your house at the very least what you could do is make her feel comfortable and be a ride or die husband for her mm -hmm. period i don't think there's any any if ands or buts with that like i would even say if it's a situation where like your wife is wrong yeah then instead of calling her in front of your mom you can just say, okay, mom, like we'll talk about it later and then pull her to the side later and just have a discussion. Don't do her basically in front of your mother Ooh. so that your mom feels like, like, oh, look, I'm so right about it. You know what I mean? Women are so like, I'm a woman and I feel like we are very catty and like, you know, we're very about that. Like, oh yeah, like I was right. You know, like, it's just like nasty behavior. I don't, I don't know, man. It just makes me feel so uncomfortable. Yeah. And I just feel like, so for all of the girls who are listening in, who are like about to get married yeah. or you're engaged or like, yeah, you've dated or you're in that process or all of that stuff. I feel like it's really nerve wracking for them. So okay? nerve wracking. I know like we might be seasoned moms here or whatever, but I rem I can still remember like that nervous feeling you get because you've grown up in a home mm -hmm. where you were, you feel so safe. Yeah. Okay. Totally. And you, you're spoiled. Yeah. In your home. yeah. Even if you are a girl and even if you have brothers and your brothers were treated differently yeah. than you, you know, at the end of the day that your mom and your dad and other people in your home have kept you safe in that home. Yeah. And they've given you like an immense amount of love. Right. Yeah. And now you have to leave all of yeah. that and go into a new home. Okay. But like completely where different everything. The, the dynamic is different. Yeah. The language could be different. Oh, yeah. The tones yeah. could be different. The way things are said, yeah. where to put your shoes, where to hang your jacket, yeah. what button to use oh when you go to do we use the dishwasher in this home or is it just a yeah. display? How is the cleaning done? Like what reg is used for cleaning the counter? Mm -hmm. Is it this reg or is it this mm -hmm. reg? Do we not even use a reg? Like it's like- Are we using paper towels? Yeah. When do we run the laundry? Mm -hmm. Is it an after 7 p.m. situation or am I allowed to do a jury? Yeah. Day? Oh, there's so many things. There I'm getting anxiety. You're saying that. Honestly, anxiety. I feel like there are so many little things yeah. that- you really don't know, like, like you said, Hina, yeah. before, you could have dated the individual for a number of oh, years, yeah, totally. but you really don't know until you actually you do don't. start living you with don't. them. You don't. 
And I feel like I am validating everyone's feelings because that those nerves that is real. It's that so real. It's real. It's like I just I'm just thinking about it and I'm just like there are so many things like I'm from a Punjabi Pakistani yeah. household. Okay, mm-hmm. my family is very loud. Yeah, we are very loud. <laughs> We're like yell at each other. I've got younger <laughs> brothers. They would like fight. You know, my dad's like yelling. My sister's yelling. I'm yelling. Temper is here. Yeah. Yeah. Assault. <laughs> The temper is here. Okay. But when I got married, it was just like, (laughs) it was a very, because my in laws are retired. Yeah. It was a very quiet home. They're from Lahore too, though. They're Punjabi speaking and all of that. But the dynamic of the home was so different. Yeah. So I feel like there's so many things that you need to learn how to navigate. Yeah. You know, you have to kind of. You have to check yourself too. Like I had, I remember I had to be like, Aruj, when you say things a certain way, it might be funny in the Sultan home, yeah. but it's not funny oh in this God, home. Oh my God, that's so true. You know what I mean? They don't always understand your sarcasm. They don't. You can't overdo it. You don't can't overstep do the boundary. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then it's like, if you don't joke too much, then you're too serious. Yeah. Like, where is yeah. the happy balance? I, I know, I know. And then, you know, like when you're sitting with your mother-in-law and you're just like, what do I talk about? <laughs> Hanji, weather on both the chair. Most of both the chair, but oh, you know, they will like bring up some hum TV dramas, and I don't watch hum TV no, dramas. Me, me so my mother-in-law will just be like talking about some drama, and you know what? My best thing, <laughs> guys, my best segue. This is my secret, okay? Oh, if me. they talk about dramas, I'll be like. Tell me about the story. Oh, oh. Then 15, 20 minutes, she's telling me about some <laughs> some person and some girl who marries some dying. girl. And you're set. You're set. Conversation done. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Or I'll just ask her like, or you just you chow down and you just ask her for a recipe of something. Or like you ask them about their childhood. Ooh, that's a really good. That's a good one too. Because everybody wants to talk about their childhood. Yeah. Because I remember like uh, when I would talk to my dad, he would love to tell me about them. My grandfather, my dad, my mom. They love talking about yeah. that stuff. Which is kind of cool. You get to learn a little bit more about them. Yeah. But I also feel like sometimes it's like awkward. You know what else is awkward? Yeah. When like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, I feel like I'm gonna have a lava tag. Okay. <laughs> it's awkward when like you're like freshly married. Yeah. And then like they're like, oh, come with me to this event and you really don't wanna go. Oh, you really you're like, I don't wanna freaking call. Like, I don't know nobody. The only person I know is my mother in law, but you can't say no, so you say yes. You know? oh. And then the whole time you're sitting there like, if only I was not such a freaking people pleaser. <laughs> So you just go and honestly it's like it's just so hard it's not so because hard. you're like i gotta score the good points yep. okay yep. i gotta make the effort i gotta show the hubs yeah they're like i love your mom yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean it's so hard it's so the hard. dynamic is so hard it's really <laughs> oh my god it's so hilarious. i'm dying <laughs> and honestly it's just like a really tough time it's so funny because like i swear like when you compare it to like your relationship with your mom and your mom says like, Hey, I'm going to like this auntie's house and no, I'm not going. No, hundred <laughs> percent. Can you imagine saying that to your mother? Oh God, I could never, I could never, I could never. Oh my God. It's so funny. Like even the way we talk to our mom, there's like, I don't want to go mom. I'm good. No, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. And then like to your mother's like, um, nay auntie, op, jelly, jam, bin, 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 bin. and you're just like, Whoa, I'm a completely different person. Oh my goodness. It is. You it's just crazy. have to like wear that daughter-in-law. Oh, yeah. 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 And I just feel like it's so I feel like even now I'm learning how st- I'm still it's learning hard. how to navigate it. You know it's what I mean? Very hard relationship to navigate. But I also think that there's girls out there that are that have really great relationships mm-hmm. with their mother in laws. Um, and I feel like I love seeing that because I do think the mother in law daughter in law relationship has or like in law relationship they have such a bad rap. Yeah, they really do. I mean for good reason. Yeah. But I I have to address that there's good relationships too. And I the other thing I like sometimes I listen to people talk about this and they're like oh well you know if you treat your mother-in-law like your mom then the relationship will be great and I'm just like that's BS no I don't I might I'm like you can't do that Mm -hmm. because that's not your mom Mm -hmm. I'm sorry like the way that I talk to my mom yeah is complete I wouldn't even talk to my aunts like that yeah like I wouldn't am I I'm so close to my aunts Mm -hmm. but I would never I like I can be comfortable but I just don't think that I can do that because number one I think that as much as you want to say those things and yeah. put it out there like it's just like my mom I, I think that 
it gives it there's an opportunity for them to take it in a negative way because the things that I say to my mom very openly and very freely mm -hmm. if I said those things to like an in-law um, there's a chance that people would catch feelings yeah because their dynamic is completely different mm -hmm. you know what I mean so I, I think that's kind of it's not that easy it's easier said than done a hundred percent also I feel like it's good when you have a different relationship with your mother. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I don't think you should try and make it so that it's the same with your mom. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I feel like you have a special relationship with your mom. Keep it that way. Yeah, for sure. And then create something new with your mother-in-law. That way, I feel like you're not trying to have that relationship with your mother-in-law you're not trying to have it the, at the same level as with your yeah, mom yeah and then the expectations might be a little bit lower yeah then it's yeah. like little th then maybe you'll you'll realize a different way to be like to say yes or no for sure and it doesn't sure. necessarily have to be the way that it is with your mom for sure i remember there was this auntie once it's like years ago okay so i went to her house yeah son newly got married okay so we all went and we we're like congratulations like yeah. da, 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 whatever and uh, the girl was from pakistan okay so we're all like super excited guys it was only like like i want to say six days into the wedding oh six God. days like okay. fresh okay oh, wow. the, the papers had just been signed okay <laughs> the ink hadn't even dried honest to god okay and uh so i asked i was like oh congratulations like how's it going it must be so nice to have like a yeah. other person in the yeah. house and all these things and she goes, Haan, itni late oh my god. Isko to bhi nahi aata. Oh my god. Anda bhi nahi banati. And I looked at her and I was like, Auntie, you anda khati hai? <laughs> <laughs> and I like caught myself because I was like, oh shit, maybe I shouldn't have said that. But honestly, I just looked at her like, are you serious? It's been I hate a that. week. I hate that. Okay. Because I feel and like that is like, you you know you're going to be a toxic. Yeah. yeah. And like, I don't know, you know the, with the way Canadian homes are? Like, yeah. I feel like they're not soundproof. They're not. So I'm sure the daughter-in-law is sitting upstairs and can hear you say this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not nice. And I also feel like, would you say these things to your own daughter? No. Like, I think like our parents are so much more lenient when it comes to their own kids. Where it's like, oh, she's probably tired. Or like, they might tell you, like, I'm not going to lie. We used to sleep in super late to yeah. her mom was like get the hell up what's wrong with you guys mm -hmm. but it was never to the point where she would be like talking and saying that stuff and like you know railing us in front of other people like mm -hmm. that i mean sometimes she did <laughs> But not to the point where it's like complete like annihilation. Yeah. And I think in an in-law situation, as an in-law, you have to be so careful with yeah. your words. Yeah. Because believe me, when it when if that ever reaches her, mm -hmm. I think she's gonna be so butthurt by it and yeah. there's no recovery from that. There is no like it's gonna take years to recover from that. Yeah. Because you know this mother-in-law is not gonna apologize and be like, Britta, I'm so sorry that it She's not gonna say that. No. She's not gonna say that. Come on, that. And then that daughter-in-law is gonna go to her husband and be like, "Look at what your mom said." Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it's gonna cause a rift, and you're gonna have issues. And those are not small issues. Mm -hmm. Those can become really big issues mm -hmm. and cause huge cracks in your relationship. I think that's something that, like, hopefully, like the newer generation, they like are able to have these discussions with the people that they're marrying in advance, mm -hmm. so they can set boundaries. Yeah. Because I don't think our generation even knew that that was something we should have done. No. You know what I mean? We just kind of jumped into it head first, like, oh well. That, and you kind of just assume that this is just the way it is. Like, yeah, nobody exactly. ever guides you or tells you maybe have these conversations with your husband to be totally, beforehand. Totally. Nobody really tells you, like, you know, open communication is key in a relationship yeah. because I feel like even us growing up, we always thought that the husband was kind of always going to take his mom's side. For sure. For right? Sure. Yeah. And then I feel like when we learned about how communication is key and keeping it open and honest, yeah. um, you're able to navigate sort of like, no, but your husband can take your side. I think... To what you're saying, even though I said for sure, I think I didn't understand it from my perspective, like from my side, mm -hmm. but I, I feel like I, I think my thinking is more that like, no, when you marry someone, that person is going to take your side. Mm. But I think if that doesn't happen yeah. and you see like something different happening, that is when I think those cracks start to build mm. because I feel like even in a relationship, right? Let's say you're not married yet. Let's say you're dating somebody or even if you're not dating, but you're like engaged mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and like you are, you know, having a conversation and somebody else kind of inserts themselves in the conversation and your husband to be fiance, boyfriend, whatever it is, takes their side over your side. Mm -hmm. I think you as a woman feel very neglected. A hundred percent. And I 
feel like one of their main jobs as a husband is to be your biggest supporter. Yeah. And like to be there to stand by you and protect you. And I think if they can't do that, then it's like a major red flag. That's how I think of it. I agree yeah. because I feel like if they can do that, yeah. then you are going to be more open to treating oh, totally. their mom like your mom. Yeah. I'm going to say that in quotes. Because, because you know that you're getting support. Exactly. And you know if there is a misstep, then there is going to be somebody that is going to say, I got this. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll take care of it. Yes. You don't get involved. Yeah. And I think that's the best way to do that relationship yeah. because I feel like if you take that assertive approach and you're like, uh, mother-in-law, <laughs> come sit down. We need to have a chat. You know what I mean? I think it can, there is a chance that it could kind of explode because as women, we kind of let our emotions do a lot of the talking sometimes. And there's a probability for things to get out of you know, taken out of context. Right. But I think if you, you utilize your husband as a middleman, cause his relationship with his mom is so different and he knows how to defuse. You know what I mean? That. Yeah. Because you don't know the triggers. Mm -hmm. You don't just like he doesn't know your mom's triggers. Mm -hmm. Right. But the other thing I want to say is like, it's unfortunate that women have to deal with this because on the flip side of it, when the guy is coming to your house for dinners and stuff, they don't have to deal with these problems. They don't. Cause they get so much love and they fit right in and everyone is just like catering to them. And so as a woman, you feel very lonely if your situation is that you are you have toxic in-laws it's it's hard it's so hard because when your husband is going to walk into into your family's house he's not going to be critiqued no for Nobody's sure he's going to say oh he didn't put his shoes on the yeah. mat or he didn't use the right ray that, that. or he did he opened the dishwasher he doesn't even have to not, open the yeah. dishwasher you know what I mean? He's not going to be critiqued that way. Yeah. But when you walk in, you know, from head to toe, it's like, well, what is she wearing? Why does yeah. she look so tired? Why yeah. did she dress up? She knew this was a davat, et cetera, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And the list goes on. It's like from the minute you walk in yeah. to the minute you leave, you know that there's this process of judgy eyes. Judgy eyes. And then also this, um, this, there's this like unspoken, I think, um, like there's this unspoken level of like, where, where you have to be so perfect. Mm -hmm. And, and I think in, in Desi households in general, like women are ra girls are raised to be like, do everything proper, know how to make roti, know how to make food well, know how to cook, know how to clean, know how to take care of your husband. Right. Which I think some of these skills are life skills, but men should also know how to do that. But I feel like when you get married, your mother-in-laws sometimes will use these two things as a sense of pride to be like, Oh, look, like my daughter-in-law can do this and this and this. So if by chance you can, and you're not as good as she thinks you should be, then it's almost like, oh my God, she can't even do this. Just like your story that you're saying, right? Yeah. Or like she can't, she can't cook and she can't do this and she can't do that. But I also think that you have to look at it from the perspective of like, you know, back in the day, um, our mothers, they didn't have to go to university and college and do all of these things because they had husbands that would take care of them mm -hmm. and like provide and do all of that stuff. Right. And in this generation, and I'm not saying that husbands don't provide, but I'm saying women are in the workforce, they're raising children, they are educating themselves, they're like getting PhDs and masters and all that stuff. And I feel like there's a lot on their plates. So for them, maybe not to be the greatest cook of desi food, which is not easy to cook, mm. it shouldn't be like something that you, it's something that, that it's like a, something you can learn so easily. You know right. what I mean? It's not something you should gauge a person's goodness on. Mm. You know what I mean? Like there's so many good qualities that person can have. If she can't make one thing, it's not that big of a deal. You can teach her. It's a great opportunity to bond. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh -huh. So I, I just think people nitpick because they feel like you should, they don't fit the criteria in their mind, mm -hmm. but that criteria in your mind as a mother-in-law shouldn't even exist mm -hmm. because honestly speaking, you're not marrying her. Mm -hmm. Your son is. And if he's happy, you should be happy for him. Yeah. It really is that simple. It really is yeah. that simple. So I've also heard like crazy mother-in-law stories. Oh my God. Years. Like... There are some loopy mother-in-laws in the GTA. Sure, girl. You want to share some? <laughs> some of them are like extremely like, like the scenario that I found. There are also like other mother-in-laws where honestly, you, no matter who their son marries, that bohu is just never going to be enough. I think that's the case for a lot of people that have issues yeah. with their in-laws. And like, it'll be like, they will suggest in front of everyone. Like, why are you even in this marriage? that kind of mother-in-law. You know oh what I mean? God. Yeah. They'll just be, like, just be like, just like, screw it. Like, we'll just get you married to somebody else. Or there are the mother-in-laws where they bring Bahu's back from Pakistan. Yeah. 
and they have all these crazy expectations of bahus from Pakistan. <laughs> Because Pakistan's here, right? You should just know. You should yeah. be even more family oriented. And yeah. You should be even more willing traditional. to like traditional. Yeah. You're not a Western Bahu. You're from like, you know, our Gong or whatever. But like, are they bringing the Bahu for themselves or are they bringing it for their son? Right? I, I also, think, did you check your son? Yeah, that's the other thing no. that I have an issue with. Me too. But I think for them, and I maybe it's just like a, something that every mother thinks that like their kids are amazing at everything. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I'm not gonna lie. Like I don't think my mom ever said that with us mm -hmm. that like my kids are amazing. I'm not gonna lie. She never boosted us to the point where it was like. She never did that. Yeah, she never did that. She doesn't do it with my brother. She doesn't do it with us. She's mm -hmm. very blunt with us. Mm -hmm. Which in time, sometimes I was like, I wish I, I wish she was more like, oh my god, I love my. But then I actually kind of appreciate it because I think it makes you a more humble person. Right. I think the kids that I've heard that like they're so amazing all the time, um, their their heads are too big and they genuinely think there's nothing wrong with them. Meanwhile, everyone on the outside is like, you're full of flaws. <laughs> You're like a walking red flag, okay? <laughs> like, I see it sometimes, like, when you interact with somebody or, yeah. like, you meet couples and you, like, look at their relationship. Like, I feel like I need to meet you, like, maybe two, three times, and I just pick up on the vibes. Mm. And for me, I'm just like, I can see the issue. Mm. Like, it's either you is the issue or that is the issue. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can just tell. And I feel like you can tell with the aunties, too. So let me ask you a question. Now that we're moms. Yeah. Okay. Do you feel like a lot of the aunties who would boast their kids when we were growing up? Yeah. Or like I had a lot, I had a lot of like cousin issues, like where yeah. cousins would just be like on top of the world, and you kind of look at them yeah. like, why you're not even like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, do you feel like it was a lot of the parents just, um, like projecting? I think, because they kind of maybe knew that maybe their kids had insecurities or flaws, or other kids were better, so they would do it more. I don't know if it's that. I actually Something felt like that. maybe it was for certain people, but I feel like the ones that I know that were like that, I think it was more to just boost the parents' ego. Mm. To make the parents feel better like they were good parents. Right. You know what I mean? Because like I, I know people that where like the parents would be like, look at everything my son did. Oh, he just won this award. And like this you know look at this this is so amazing and like i'm not gonna lie me and my sisters were very smart mm -hmm. growing up but i don't think my parents were ever like look at my daughter, look at my. right they just didn't do that they really didn't they were proud of us but like they never really did that um outside of like our circle unless mm -hmm. someone asked specifically mm -hmm. but i feel like the ones that did i feel like it came from a place where like it was like this major sense of pride which it should be mm -hmm. but then it was also a way to make themselves feel like our parenting is so amazing Right. But in my mind, I'm going to be so honest with you. I feel like I could do everything for my child. And I don't think I will ever get to a point where I can say, I am an amazing parent. I don't think so You either. always feel like a failure for some weird reason. Always. Like you're not doing enough. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's a problem in itself. But I feel like if you're... I, I know it's important to like acknowledge the great things that you're doing. And I do do that. But I think, I think you have to kind of temper your ego a little mm -hmm, bit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because there's always going to be people that are better than your kids. Yeah. There's always going to be people that maybe are not at that level as your kids. Mm. But I feel like keep yourself humble and your kids will be humble. Yeah. Like, I'm not about that, like, overly proud, look at my child, golden child. I hate that shit. Yeah. I hate it. I also feel like um, a lot of... so. Our generation of parents, I hope that we do this. Yeah. But I feel like we have a good tendency to self-reflect. Yeah, yeah. Right. So I feel like at the end of the day, even if I feel like I did something great as a mom, or like I was super patient, or I tried the gentle parenting technique and yeah. it worked, I'll still go back and self-reflect and be like, oh, I could have done it a little for sure. Better. For sure. And you know, like we I are our that. own worst critic. For sure. Yeah. But honestly, I feel like there are a lot of moms out there who just aren't like that. They're not like that. And I've met a lot of moms yeah. like that where they're like their biggest thing is like, oh, um, yeah, like look at my child, look at my child, my child did this, look at my child, my child did that. And I'm like, that's amazing. But honestly speaking, like your child is not perfect. Mm -hmm. Like, and I don't like, I don't, I think like, even when I meet people like that immediately, I'm like, I don't really want a relationship with right. you. Right. Because I think moving forward, I would always have to hear this and I'm not going to lie. Like I'm all about instilling confidence in your kids, um, making sure that they feel loved affirmations. I do that all the time, mm -hmm. but I'm just not the mom that needs to publicly be like, look at my 
child. Look at my child. Like I am not that way. Same. And I feel like the people that I know who have done that with their kids that I personally know, I just feel like their kids develop this big ego. Mm -hmm. And I just think that it's kind of gross to see. Mm -hmm. It's just gross to me. Like there's a difference between confidence and like, you know, just being kind of cocky. Yeah. I don't like that. And I feel like, you know, like everyone has flaws. So like it's okay. And, and this is where I think the toxic mother-in-law situation comes into play where like you put your kids on these pedestals mm -hmm. and you think so much of them. Um, maybe someone will say something about your kid, like, Oh my God, I love this meal or whatever it may be. And immediately for you, it's like, Oh my God, someone said that about my kid. Oh my God. Sense of pride, sense of pride. Did you hear that person said that about my kid? Mm -hmm. And like, I wish that you would have that same energy as an in-law for your daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. Truly. Right? I think that if you had that energy for your in-law, like your daughter-in-laws, y'all's relationship would be amazing. Mm -hmm. I think that's the... the and issue. I feel like mother-in-law should also remember, like, a daughter-in-law is an extension of your family. For sure. Yeah. So anything that she is doing um, that you know... And deep down, these mother-in-laws, they know. They know that the daughter-in-laws are doing things yeah. that are making them happy and proud. Sure. You know, like, they're going to host a dawah, or they're going to make something, or they're going to, the husband's going to look great, or they're going to, like, pick a great outfit for someone, or they're going to do an Eid party or yeah. something. And mother-in-laws know deep down that, wow, I am, like, this is really great. But she did do an amazing job. Think, for sure, yeah. But I feel like they're, the problem is the gap where they feel that way, but they can't express it. And I think this is your issue, but if mother-in-laws can actually understand that this is an extension of my family okay if she's gonna do something that is amazing I should also acknowledge that for sure and it, that that shift yeah. needs to happen it does I think that would make a huge change in so many relationships mm -hmm. but then to that I also say there's mother-in-laws that w could internally think that while wow, she's doing an amazing job but then what about those mother-in-laws that almost feel like if the daughter-in-law does something too amazing then like they are you know, like not going to be as important anymore. Uh, yeah. It's the top boy complex. I'm telling you that's, that's, I think what that is. It okay? is. Because I think they almost feel like, and I feel like the daughter-in-laws are younger. Mm -hmm. They're going to be savvy mm -hmm. girlies. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're going to pick up on things. They're going to be Stalin profiling. You know what I mean? So I feel like maybe for them, it's almost like, I don't know if this has happened, but like, maybe it could be like a jealousy thing too, yeah. where it's like, Oh, well, you know, um, you're doing this too well. Mm. You know what I mean? Or like if somebody compliments your food mm. and you know, they're like, Oh, your food tastes amazing. And maybe the mother-in-law's catching feelings like, Oh, but like I make the food. So like, why does your food taste amazing? Mm. You are having been cooking a lot, right? Cause that happens too. That does happen. Yeah. Or it's like if the mother-in-law's home was always the neutral home in the family yeah. and now you move in and now your, you and your husband's home is like the neutral. Wow. Home in the family. That's a good one. That's a really good one. That yeah. can also be thing. It's the dynamic lot. changes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's a lot of, it's the top boy complex, that's what yeah. I'm going to call it, because I, I really feel like they have ruled and dominated in the family and have mm. been the head of the home, the higher, and you're not yeah. coming in to become the head of the home, yeah. but you are now coming in to be like, hey, let's make a little, yeah. let's make some changes. Yeah. Yeah, let's yeah. push things up a bit. Like you come and you're like, mm, I really like these curtains. Let's change that. Right? And you're like, don't you dare touch my curtains. <laughs> Have you watched that movie, uh, Rocky and Rani Ki Prem Kahani? Yeah, I did. It's literally that whole it Jaya Bachchan situation. Yeah, yo, she was because toxic. I know, but she was top dog. She was top dog. She was top dog. But right here. But then I right say here. to that, if you've put someone on that pedestal, then you are the one that's doing it, mm -hmm. right? You're creating the toxicity. Mm -hmm. And then when you put them on the pedestal and you can't, check them again that's your fault mm -hmm. right it's not your the daughter-in-law's mm -hmm. fault you need to have the courage be a man and check check them yeah right you see something the, the, i think the, the issue that i have sometimes is that like i think from what i've heard from people it's more like the men will even sometimes notice that the mother has done something or said something inappropriate mm -hmm. or wrong, mm -hmm. but they don't say anything. Mm -hmm. And so the daughter will just, the daughter-in-law will just sit there and stew in it and be sad about it because mm -hmm. she's kind of in a position where it's like, I can't even speak my mind because I don't want to cause chaos and problems, mm -hmm. right? I don't want to ruin my marriage, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. And so you feel alienated. You do. You know what I mean? You so it's, it's really rough. Yeah. It's, it's a rough situation. And I feel like with, um, with a lot of men if they know that they're mom sometimes this is the line that i really like really bothers me they're like just take it with a grain of salt oh, it's just the way she oh, is God. 
Yeah. And it's like, that's it's just, good. it might be the way she is yeah. for you. Yeah. But don't make it that that's the way she is for me. 100%. Because she is your mom. Yeah. You grew up in this environment. This is normal for, for you. you. Exactly. Don't normalize it for me. For sure. And I think that's when the, that's when the husbands need to step up. Yeah. That's when they need to put their foot down and be like, you know what? She's right. It is normal for me. She can say that to me. She can yeah. do all these things to me. Don't do it to her. For sure. Right? And I also think that there's like, for example, you get married and there's certain rules that mother-in-laws have. Like a rule you could say is like, maybe you're the type of girl that is like, you know, you dress more comfortable at home and you're okay with wearing like, you know, like a shorter shirt and a skirt or whatever it may be. Cause your family has allowed that. Mm -hmm. And then you get married and you go into this house and this house is very traditional and they want you to wear like shalvar kameez at home or dress more modest or whatever it may be. And you don't feel comfortable doing that. I think that is your husband's job to like find the neutral ground mm -hmm. because it's not fair for you to have to change everything about you, change your personality to suit other people's needs. I think when you do that, your identity shifts and then you're not being authentic to yourself. And I think that creates this like mountain of problems, if not at that time in the future, mm -hmm. because at some point you're going to realize that this is not even who I am. Mm -hmm. Why am I having to put a mask on in my home where I should feel so comfortable? Mm -hmm. And mother-in-laws need to be a little bit more understanding mm -hmm. that just because my family is this way and we have these values and traditions does not mean other people have those values and traditions. It doesn't make them a bad person for being different. Mm -hmm. They've been raised a very different way. So you have to be okay with change and differences in people. Like appreciate that they're different and they're loving your child. If that That's like the biggest thing. Like someone is loving your child, mm -hmm. okay? And I feel like just on that note, yeah, mother-in-laws also need to understand that that's who they're, they are in their home. Okay? Yeah, exactly. Those are their traditions. Yeah. That's what she wanted and the husband wanted for like everybody in the family to yeah. have. But now that your son is married, let him have his own home, Yeah, exactly. Right? Let him have his own traditions and things that he wants yeah. to do with his wife and their future kids and all these things yeah. and be okay with it. Yeah. Obviously, if you feel like it's completely like left field, yeah. voice your concerns and yeah. maybe find a happy medium and all these things. I just feel like there's there's again a huge spectrum there and is. i just feel like mother-in-laws need to be a little bit more understanding yeah. because daughter-in-laws sacrifice a lot and i feel exactly. like not it's not always the case but i yeah. feel like a lot of daughter-in-laws just sacrifice everything to meet mm -hmm. the mother-in-law on this end yeah where the mother-in-law should kind of also be coming in the middle totally and i also think like from every girl that i know personally and i don't i know there's people out there that may be different but like from every girl that i personally know before you get married and you go into someone's house, I think every girl wants a good relationship with the, with the mother-in-law. Yeah. It's like something you dream of. You actually do. Like you want a relationship with them. You like hope to God that you can do everything to please them mm -hmm. because that's how you've been raised. Okay. And so like you try to do everything and you try to fit in and you're trying your best. So I feel like if you can't as a mother-in-law accept that and reciprocate it and make someone just feel loved, like it's the craziest thing to me sometimes because I think like what would a daughter-in-law want from a mother-in-law mm -hmm. just to feel welcome yeah. to feel loved mm -hmm. I honestly think the the biggest thing is I just want to feel loved yeah that's really it yeah I don't necessarily need you to like throw gifts at my face I mean not that I would mind <laughs> Here and there, sure. You want to sprinkle some of those? Sure. But like, I feel like for the most part, you just want to feel loved. Yeah. You want to feel accepted and you want to feel loved. Mm -hmm. And is that so hard? Mm -hmm. Is it so hard to like make someone feel loved? Yeah. To say something nice to them? Mm -hmm. Like, wow, you look really beautiful today. Or I love that you did this. Or, um, oh, this tastes really good. You know, even if you don't necessarily love it, like sometimes you can just say, hey, this is something different that maybe I haven't had before, but thanks for making the effort. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Those small things, I think, make the biggest difference. I agree. The way that even we talk to our children, mm -hmm. right? They're not perfect. No. But if they do the smallest thing, like, let me be real. Sometimes my daughter will bring me a picture and I'm just like, this is the most beautiful thing. And half the time it's just scribbled. Okay. <laughs> but for me, I'm like positive reinforcement. Yeah. She put some effort in. I love that this, the per color purple you use, blah, 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 blah. If you can you do that with your kids, why is it so hard to do that with another adult? 
Exactly. That's my, it's like mind boggling. Exactly. Like you want to have issues on purpose. Right. Honestly, it's like you want to, like you want to do it because you want to shit talk with all your other fellow aunties and have something to talk about while you're drinking chai. It's mm. just wild to me. I also feel like mother-in-laws need to tone it down on the critique and the advice. Oh my God. Yes. <sighs> wow. It's not always needed. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's you know, not. sometimes I appreciate the advice and I feel like here and there, every once in a while, everybody could use some advice. Yeah. Every time though? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially when it comes to parenting. Right? Like, it's just like... Oh, here we go again. Here we go again. Like, no, I'm sorry. I'm not going to be doing this. Right? <laughs> Let me live. Because sometimes I, even with your own mother, you're just like, mama, stop. Like, oh my God, we're going to do it this way. You Honestly. Know? But then the, the hard part is that you can't have that conversation as openly because you almost have to be like, oh, fine. I'll just accept for what you're saying in the moment. And then when I'm alone, I'll do whatever I want. Right. I know. Sometimes it's the in one ear, out the other. Yeah. So like speaking on this topic, because I think this is something a lot of people wonder about. Do you think it's good to live with your in-laws? Like open topic. Honestly, yeah. no. I would say I agree with you. Okay. And the reason why I'm saying this is because I feel like, um, and we said this earlier in this episode that even if you've dated your partner, or yeah. you've known them for a really long time, you don't really know anyone until you move in with them. hundred percent. And I feel like if you move in with them with extended family also in the same yeah. room, it's really hard to develop a strong foundation in your relationship with your partner. One million percent. Because there are just too many cooks in the kitchen. Oh, there are. Yeah. If you are able to move out or have your own space, especially in those early, like, I want to say year, year and a half mark of your marriage. Yeah. I feel like it just builds such a strong foundation that even if let's just say in life circumstances, you have to move back in yeah, or whatever the case. Yeah. may be um at least the foundation is there so that even when you do move in some boundaries can be set yeah exactly because then you'll be a little more comfortable even having the conversation yes right the conversation flows better you're not brand new where you have to like be like this extremely like respectful person all the time yeah or it's yeah. just like if you and your husband have lived off on your own and you do laundry a certain way. Yeah, exactly. Right? Now you're moving in with family and they do laundry a different way. Exactly. You can you know the rule with your husband. You're like, yeah. but this works for us. Yeah, exactly. So now when you move in, you know that you are still going to do laundry that way. Exactly. So at least even if you're not in your own space, certain things that you've set, certain boundaries that you've had, certain things that work in your relationship, those don't change. I agree. And that think, makes yeah. a big difference because it's the little things that it really up. is the little things. It, it really is a little thing. Mind you, I know that there's people that have like big things that happen yeah. where like, so I've like, you know, like there's like some people, they post these things on Sundays on Instagram where it's like, tell me the craziest things that have happened. And people will reply and the stories are wild where it's like my mother-in-law slapped me. And I'm just like, what? Or my father-in-law did this. And I'm just like, oh my God, like this is just a lot for me. Yeah. But I think to what you're saying, I agree with you because I think that like your relationship is way more important. You and your husband's relationship at that time. It's so much more important for you to focus on each other, mm -hmm. build each other up before inviting the extra stuff, mm -hmm. you know? Cause like to what you said, I would even say, even if you moved in with your own parents, yeah. you would have issues like of that. Of course you would. There's no doubt, okay? Of course you would. And and I, I, I can honestly say this from personal experience mm. where it's like, even sometimes if I go over and stay at my mom's house for like two, three days, I'm just like, oh my God. My mom's like, fold the bed sheets like this. I'm just like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. So it's just like, and you're older and you need your space. You need your own autonomy in a relationship to like make decisions for yourself. You don't need a supervisor telling you that like, no, I make food this way. So you need to make food this way. Or like, you know, um, come downstairs at this time. Or like, you need to come sit down and talk to me and keep me entertained. You know what I mean? There's just so many um, unsaid responsibilities that you feel like you have to fulfill as a desi woman right in marriage also if you and i'm not saying this because any of this is easy yeah. but when you move out after you're married and it's just you and your husband in your own place that also comes with a world of responsibilities that honestly Amen. nobody is ready for it's hard it's so hard moving yeah. out on your own especially because like us girls in the desi community we weren't allowed to move out on our own we weren't allowed to do nothing we weren't allowed to do anything so you don't know what it's like to like run your yeah. own home 
home yeah oh my goodness it's a, like, it's a lot so i feel like but i feel like i will advise anybody that take that responsibility yeah and take that um over having to live with in-laws yeah because you can learn that and you will feel good about it yeah i think so. because it's a skill that you're gonna learn that's gonna work for you and your husband that's gonna help you grow in your relationship yeah I agree. versus moving into somebody else's home yeah where those rules are already set yeah I agree. now you are trying to learn how to navigate all of that while tiptoeing around unspoken expectations yeah and it becomes a lot more difficult. It does. But then I also look at the, the perspective of the people that can't move on their own. Yeah. And they're just like, we have to move in with an in-law or in-laws, right? And to that, I would say, if that is a situation, then there needs to be extremely open communication where your husband or spouse is very understanding of where you stand, how you do things, and they are able to have these conversations beforehand mm -hmm. so that you feel safe in that environment and you're able to still be authentic to yourself and, you know, be happy there. You know what I mean? So like a good example, I'm not going to lie, is that like my brother lives with my mom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause my dad's not here, but, uh, so I think with my mom and like, I can't speak on what my sister-in-law thinks. She's an amazing person, but I feel like me and my sisters, we're very honest with my mom. Mm -hmm. Like there's things that my mom, like, I remember we had this conversation where my mom was like, Oh, well, I wonder what's going to happen. I wonder what my future daughter-in-law will think of me. And I remember sitting down and being like, I can tell you right now the issues she would have with you. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. And I was like, you're overly clean. You need to chill out with that. You're, you know, you're too much of a perfectionist. You need to stop. Okay. And like, and everything I was saying, I was saying it was funny, but then you also know your mother really well. And so you have to be there to check them. Like if you are a daughter or a son, you have to check your parents sometimes, not in a rude way, but like if they ever say something to you, like if they ever start to complain about like a daughter-in-law or son-in-law, check them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Just say, okay, that's fine. Fine. And, and don't continue the conversation because then they're going to think they can continue talking to you about these things and um, vent to you about these things constantly and you become the soundboard and you don't want to be that like shit talking duo. You know what I mean? If anything, nip it in the bud. Find a solution to the problem, nip it in the bud. You don't need to continue on and make it like a catty gossip session. I hate that stuff. And I think if you don't do that and you like egg your parents on, then you are also contributing to the problem. Mm -hmm. So just check your parents. You know what I mean? Sometimes my mom comes over and she'll <laughs> just like, oh, beta, aise nahi ye karte. Yeah, they do that. Especially yeah. with kids. Oh, yeah, totally. You know? And then once in a while, I'll just look over and I'll be like, can you just stop the sauce? <laughs> <laughs> just stopping us off right now. You need to do that. Yes, you need to do too. that. Because as daughters or as sons, you have that freedom to say these things. Yes. Right? So if you see it, say it. Yeah. They're not going to get offended. Yeah. If anything, they'll like reflect. Because I know if my sister called me out on something, I would probably laugh about it. And then when I'm alone, I would reflect on mm -hmm. it. It wouldn't, I wouldn't catch feelings about it. But if a daughter-in-law says that, you're going to catch feelings. You are 100%. And then you're going to be like, oh my God, how dare she say yeah. this to me? You know She's so but the me's yeah it's like just stop it like yeah in this generation that we're in like you want to learn ways to stop these things yeah. so that your kids don't have to go through it mm -hmm. which i i know it's like hard to it's easier said than done but i still feel like whatever you can do to minimize do it mm -hmm. just do it like mm -hmm. it's gonna make your life better you're gonna have a great relationship with your like sister-in-law or, or you know whatever like why not why would you not want that that was a really great question that you asked I really liked it. Yeah, it was a great scenario. Uh, it was a really great scenario. And I feel like there's so much that you can say about it because I feel like I honestly think like 90% of like married women go through this. I know. I know. Yeah. And there's uh, like, we could do, I feel like we did a good deep dive, but I think so too. There's so much more we can talk about. And I think there's going to be things that come up. Like I know that there's going to be stories that people share mm -hmm. that we are also going to kind of maybe even talk about and discuss. And there's so many different scenarios that people go through. Yeah. So this is not the end. It's In, just the beginning. It's just the beginning. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> All right. So, um, I hope you guys liked the episode today. As Aruj said, make, you, make sure you guys like and subscribe. We always post a question after every episode on our Instagram stories uh, that's related to the episode. So, please go on our Instagram story at OK Mom Podcast and answer the question. And sometimes we'll bring up those questions in future episodes. Mm -hmm. So, other than that, we will see you guys later. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.